let's talk about private mode. Before I talk about private mode, let me quickly just show you a function that you might not know or be aware of. So when you add a piece of content to do the mural canvas and templates and sessions, there's actually a way that you can determine who's added this piece of content. So for example, if I go to this sticky note over here, I click on it and then I right click on it. I go up to show info, click on that. I have the ability to see who's actually added this piece of content. Of course, that's me. I'm the only one active in this canvas, but you can always go back and then determine who's added this piece of content. It's very handy when you work asynchronously, for example, and you want to find out what someone meant by something they've posted, or you know, if you want to elaborate on something, great way to just keep the conversation going in an easy way. However, there's certain times that you don't want someone to know that who's added that piece of content. It might be in a session where you're doing a retrospective where things want to remain private or confidential. Um, you want to share your ideas with the team, but you might feel a bit uncomfortable to do that publicly. That is one of the reasons private mode is there. The other reason we use private mode a lot is that you want to avoid groupthink. So you've seen this in, in, in real world sessions and workshops where uh, people get driven or kind of guided by what the senior manager says, or perhaps, um, you know, idea comes up and everybody thinks it's great because they're buying into the idea or the seniority of that person. And that's why we want to do like uh, individual brainstorming sessions, for example, when it comes to ideation. There is times that you want to create a little bit of a private space within the canvas. And that's also one of the benefits of using private mode. Now, how do you activate private mode as a facilitator? First thing you want to do is I want to point out it sits private mode sits here at the top uh, menu bar. You'll see the little sp spy glasses over there. And what you want to do when you want to activate a private mode session is you just click on that. And what you'll be presented with is a few settings that you can set up. Now, by default, um, you have this kind of anti-groupthink mode switched on. I'm just going to zoom in there and show you that, yeah, you, you um, want to run a private mode session. You want to start it over here, but you want the to be able to show authors when the private mode ends. So any content that's added when this is ticked, um, I can still go and right click on that piece of content and then find out who's added that content afterwards. So very handy if you're running ideation, you want to get more detail. But the other mode that I want to highlight here is this feature of a function over here or option over here is that no, I want all the authors that add content during the private mode to remain anonymous. That is for when you want to do coaching sessions, perhaps retrospectives with a little bit more of a private or a kind of confidential nature. Um, any content that's, that's then added within the private mode session will remain anonymous. And let me demonstrate that because the functionality for both is kind of the same. It's just um, you're not able to track who's added the pieces of content. Now, um, once you've set that up and decided how you want to, what context you want to run, all you have to do is hit the start button and the system might think about it a little bit. So why, while it cracks away, um, you prepare yourself. The system is now, or the canvas is ready to go into private mode. Everybody gets this message, all the participants and facilitators, and you can then acknowledge that you are now indeed going into private mode. Now it's activated. As the facilitator, you'll see that the private mode is activated. You can see at the top bar here that private mode is indeed activated and you as a facilitator can end private mode when you feel like it. I also want to quickly go on my second screen here and just show you what it looks like when someone adds content in private mode. So here's my second user. He's going to come in or she's going to come in. There's also an indicator on the top bar. Everybody can see this uh, top bar menu here uh, that they are indeed in private mode. I'm going to go in, grab a sticky note, and then add content. What you'll see um, on this screen here, I'm just going to zoom in there, is that you'll see that there's indeed a little piece of content that comes in. You cannot see what that person's typing, what they're writing. So any content that's added during private mode um, will remain invisible until you end private mode. So I'm just going to add a little note. And then in that. Now back to my screen. So I'm happy with what's happened. And then I now want to go and reveal the content and end private mode. This is actually very exciting when you do a little ideation session and you're ready to reveal to everybody what just happened. 
So I'm going to click on the end private mode button over here and then get this confirmation that I indeed want to end private mode. Make double sure you want to do that and then end the private mode. This will then give an indication to all the users that the system is now going back into its non-anonymous state. There you have it. All the users has now received this indication and you can see that I indeed have now revealed the message that the other users added. However, I want to prove to you if I click on that, right click, go on the show info, you'll see that this is now indicating that this was added in private mode and it will remain anonymous and there's no way that I can figure out who's added this message. So there you have it, private mode, super handy to combat um, groupthink and set up some really interesting ideation sessions and perhaps if you want to um, allow um, your collaborators within your session to add content and remain anonymous within a session.